Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing. And I want to welcome you to this month's Project of the Month. This month we're going to be creating an insert for clear coasters. We're going to take an existing design. We are going to take it apart, create a new design for the inside of our coasters. But the first thing I want to teach you today is we're going to look at, you notice every month you have new designs available. I want to talk to you about how to download those designs and how easy it is to work with them. So the first thing I want to do is just a little bit of Computer 101 and I want to teach you how to create a folder so you can always find your designs. So right now I'm going to left mouse click on the red X in the upper right hand corner to close my Floriani today and I am going to minimize by left mouse clicking on the minus sign my Floriani um, program. Now what I want to show you how to do is create a folder where you can always find your downloaded designs. Now I personally, you can't tell it by looking at my desktop at this moment in time, I do not put a lot of stuff on my desktop. But for ease of today, we are going to create a folder on our desktop so we can always find our downloaded designs. So what I want to do is right mouse click anywhere on your desktop. You're going to get a dialog box up and we're going to go to the word new. And we want to create a new folder. So I want you to left mouse click on the word folder. It will come up and you notice that it is blue inside. That's because it's allowing us to name this folder. And I'm going to name this folder, if I can spell, Downloaded Floriani Designs. So I know anytime I download designs, I'm going to put them in this folder and I will always be able to find them. I can move them to other folders afterwards, anything, but it's always convenient to have an easy place to go find your designs. So with that done, let's go back and left mouse click on our Floriani icon that's been minimized, bring our program back up, and we're going to come back to the words My Floriani Today and left mouse click. That will bring our My Floriani Today screen back up. Now I realize at a lot of our dealers they don't have the ability for everyone to be online while they're in class. So these are instructions you might want to jot down. You of course will have a handout that's always done for us by Nancy Ruffley that is greatly appreciated. But to understand how we're going to download these designs. Now you can see our May designs are available. I am going to left mouse click on that and by left mouse clicking it's going to take me on the internet to the place where I need to get my designs. Now I want you to notice we've got May, April, now we are actually going to use one of April's designs to take it apart but I want you to notice at this point in time every free design we've given you is still there. So for those of you that were unclear on how to get them that may have had difficulty getting to the links. We are leaving them up for a very short time, so I do recommend you go ahead and get those downloaded because there will come the time when you will only have this month's designs available. But we are going to concern ourselves with May since it's the most recent. I am going to assume you have downloaded April. If not, remember today's design is from April so you will need to get that done. But we are going to left mouse click on our May designs and we have got a file download box open and it says do you want to open or save this file? Well I want to save it. I'm going to say save and it's going to ask me where do you want to save it? Well we already made a folder on our desktop. So over under the word organize, slide your scroll bar all the way up and you notice you have the word desktop. Left mouse click on it. Now your desktop folders have come up in front of us. Let's come to our right hand scroll bar and let's scroll down till we see downloaded Floriani designs file folder. 
I want you to double left mouse click on it. It's totally empty. And our file name is Floriani May 2010. That's perfect. Let's save that. And you will notice it's downloading. And now it is saved in that folder for us. Now I'm going to tell it to open the folder. And there you see you have your Floriani May designs. And if you look at the top, your designs are in the downloaded Floriani designs, and there's your Floriani May designs. By double left mouse clicking, I can see all of our designs. Now here's our design, and here's the JPEG image it was created from. So that shows us where our designs are. Now, Floriani does not read zipped folders. So when I unzip these designs, then I should be able to get to them. So now let's open a design and I am actually going to go to my Floriani freebies is what I've named my design. I'm going to go to my April designs and I want to select the, the design called, I've, I've taken that design apart now in here, and we are going to go to our, well, Easter Butterflies is the design we're going to use. So let's open our Easter Butterflies. And now they're up on screen. Now what I actually want is I want the butterflies. I don't want the flowers. But we are going to go ahead and create three designs out of this that we can use for other things and to put together in different ways. So now the first thing you always need to do when you're going to take apart a design is you really need to find out over in your sequence view. Now I'm going to show you if I put my cursor between the properties view and the sequence view at the top of that darker gray bar you're going to notice it's going to turn into a it looks like two little parallel lines with an arrow above and below it. By holding down my left mouse key I can drag my sequence view up and I can get it where I can see all the colors very clearly. Now of course if we want to look at our properties we're going to have to drag it back down. But I want you to notice we have color one, we have our lock, and we have our little eyeball. So I'm going to left mouse click on my eye. And for some reason my computer's like a click behind today. Now I'm going to click, and I notice it got rid of some of the flowers. It has not affected my butterflies. I'm going to click the next one. Good. I'm going to click the next one. So far we haven't affected our butterflies, but we're removing. See, I still have leaves and stuff that are up under this butterfly, and I want to get those to all go to sleep. Well, now those went to sleep. Color 5 just went to sleep. Color 6 went to sleep maybe. Okay, and if I come to color 7, I want you to notice it removed part of my butterfly. So I need color number 7 still awake. So now you can see though I have removed everything from around my butterflies. The whole design is still there, it's just asleep. So the first thing I want to do is I want to left mouse click on my lasso tool, it's the second tool on your left hand toolbar and with it selected I am going to left mouse click and create a lasso around my pink butterfly. Once I've lassoed it I will right mouse click on it. It is now selected. I am going to right mouse click on the selected design and I'm going to copy it. We are going to come up here and open a new piece of paper, upper left hand corner, and we are going to right mouse click and we are going to paste it. Now with it still selected, I want you to right mouse click on it and I want you to group it. That's so we can move it around without taking it apart by accident. So now I have a new design that I am going to say File, Save As, and I am going to name this Pink Butterfly. 
I'm going to save it. And I've saved it in the same folder with my April designs. Now I could have created a new folder and called it Coasters and started putting the designs in there that I'm racking up for my coasters. Now along the bottom here you see we have Easter butterflies and now we have pink butterfly. Let's go back to the Easter butterflies. The next thing I want to do is grab my lasso tool again. And I don't know what's with this computer today. but And now I'm going to come around and I am going to lasso my yellow butterfly. By left mouse clicking it has now been selected. I'm going to right mouse click on it. I am going to copy it. I'm going to open up a new piece of paper. I'm going to right mouse click and paste. And I will again right mouse click on this and I want to group it. And now I'm going to say file, save as, yellow butterfly. And I will save that also in my April folder. So now we have created along the bottom a yellow butterfly, a pink butterfly, and we still have our original design. Now what I want to do is I would like, I've got my yellow butterfly selected, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get my lasso tool again. And I am actually now this time, I am going to lasso both butterflies. And I am going to delete them. I'm going to use the delete key on my keyboard. They're gone. Now come over to your sequence view, right mouse click, and it will bring up a dialog box, and I can tell it to show all. Now I deleted those butterflies, so now all I have is my daisies. I can now save this file, save as daisies, d-a-i-s-e-s, -E daisies, and I can save that. And now I can go ahead and close the design, the close this design down, and we will continue to close these. And we have never, because we renamed each design, we never affected. If I come up here and go to open, I can come in here to my Easter butterflies and know that the design has not been compromised because I took it apart and gave each new piece a new name. So we have our original and we have created three additional designs in our software that we can use. Now we are going to go ahead and close our Easter butterflies and we're going to get a new piece of paper. Now these coasters come and um, your dealer will have the name of the place that you can purchase these coasters. Now, um, one of these coasters was purchased at a local Joann's. Um, I'm finding not all Joann's carry them, so we do have a website available that you can go to and order coasters, or your dealer can order them for you. But the cutout in them, and the 8 o'clock, because it comes with 14 count 8 o'clock in them, now you could use that to put your designs on, or you could cut your own circles of fabric and put any color of fabric in these. But the first thing we're going to need to do is we are going to come over. Now today I'm not going to worry about my grid system. Normally the first thing we do is set up this grid system. I know that it is in half an inch grid sections. I happen to be in millimeters right now, which is perfectly fine with me. No, actually it's not. We are going to right mouse click and we are going to go ahead and change to inches. So let's left mouse click on the word inches. Now I'm going to come up to my artwork tool and we all know this is probably one of my favorite tools. And we are going to um, select the ellipse. Now I want you to hold down your control key and don't let go of it. And hold down your left mouse key and this will keep your circle from being skewed like a football, from being an oval it will hold a perfect circle. So just draw a circle and let go of it. Now we have a blue artwork circle on the screen. I'm going to left mouse click on it and you will notice that I have this circle, I have all the control boxes around it and now we still have our sequence view 
stretched up because the software doesn't change until we change it. So go ahead and put your left mouse cursor back on the top of the bar that says sequence view. Hold down your left mouse key and drag this sequence view back down so that we can see our properties box because we need to use that. So I am now going to go to transform and I want this circle because the circle of cloth that comes in these coasters, the opening in them, is three inches. So we want our height and width to be three inches. We will apply that. And now that we have that applied, I want you to, with your circle selected, let's go ahead and fit it to screen, I want you to right mouse click. Now this is artwork, but Floriani will allow us to turn it into stitches. So we are going to convert this to a run stitch right now. So now I have my run stitch. So what this will actually do is it will stitch out first because this is the first thing digitized and it will give us a placement line to lay our three inch circle of fabric in so we have perfect placement. Once we've done that we are going to go to file merge and I want you to go back and I want you to get your pink butterfly so let's open that up now remember he has been grouped so we do not have to worry about pulling him apart now we could right now I've got this butterfly grouped hold down your control key and select your blue circle so everything on the screen is selected I want you to right mouse click and I want you to align centers. Now click off of it and do you see how that butterfly looks like it's off center? It isn't, it's just the way the design is angled. So this is why I like to have those visuals like the circle. Even though we're using it as a placement line, even if I wasn't going to change it into any kind of stitch, I would have it there because I want the butterfly to look the best visually pleasing. So I'm going to hold down my control key with it selected and I'm going to use my arrow buttons to move this around to where I think he visually looks good. Or I of course could grab him and I could just drag him and move him. And see I think the butterfly looks better there than how they had it centered. Now this is all personal preference. So remember that. There's no, this is not an exact science. It's what looks best to your eyes. Now that we have our butterfly in the circle, I want you to come over here and I want you to select the circle. Remember it's a run stitch now. And now what we want to do is we want to right mouse click on it and I want you to copy. I want you to right mouse click and I want you to paste. Once we've pasted that, we are again going to right mouse click and we are going to convert this to a steel stitch. Now what this has done is we have bordered our butterfly. I am going to change the color of the steel stitch. With it selected, I am going to select the darker pink by right mouse clicking on it. That has changed that color. Now remember, our circle is still the original blue. I'm going to zoom in. We're going to hit our Z on our keyboard. And I want you to zoom in really close. And you're going to see right in here, you're going to see a kind of a blue line and you're going to see that pink line. Now this blue line is the very edge, outside edge of our coaster. So we cannot have this hanging over. So we are going to select the steel stitch. You can come over here and select it by left mouse clicking on it in your sequence view. And I'm going to tell the inset to be 100% and apply that. And do you notice how it scoots all in? Here's our placement line. It's still blue. But this has scooted all the way in now so that our coaster will look good. It won't have the, the satin stitch hanging off the edge. Now remember, you will not see the back of this fabric. Once you place it in your coaster, it has a cork stopper 
that pushes in and holds this fabric in place. So these can be changed out all the time for the season that it is. You can have your spring butterflies. You can put monograms. I'm going to show you a couple of other ideas. We are going to focus on the butterflies today. That's what we're doing. But I'm going to give you some other ideas during this lesson. So now that we've done that, what I want you to do is I'm going to go in this sequence view again. We're going to come, and I'm going to raise my sequence view up a little bit again, and I want you to grab this steel stitch, your pink, and I want you to pull it and drop it at the bottom. We are changing the sequence. Now I'm going to left mouse click on the top one, and I want to change it to the same color of pink because I don't want it to show being a different color. Now, what I have done is I have changed the order. So we're going to have this circle stitch out. We will then place our fabric. It will stitch out our butterfly. And then it will go ahead and stitch a pretty border stitch on our coaster. The next step we're going to do is I'm going to fit this back to screen. Now, I want to stitch out as many of these at the same time as possible because we're not just going to do one coaster. Now, for class, you may just stitch out one. But here is the next thing that I always do if I'm going to do multiples. I'm going to come over to my hoop icon on my left-hand toolbar. Left mouse click on it. I am going to select my Baby Lock Brother 300 by 200 hoop. I'm going to select my largest hoop and I'm going to say OK. So now you can see my hoop. I am going to go ahead and I've got my little select guy picked. I'm just going to draw a square around this and it's going to select everything on my screen. Or I could have done Control A is your shortcut to select everything on your screen. I'm just going to kind of move this up into the corner so I can get an idea of how many I could get in this hoop and I think I can get two high and three across. So I'm now going to go to my tools. Now we are still in inches. Let's right mouse click and go back to metric for this part because we can't think when we start to do our tools if we are in inches if I put three across it's looking at inches it's not looking at metric and I do not understand why it works the way it does but I'm telling you it's the best way is to go back to metric because this is reading millimeters, it's not reading inches. So now across, I know I can get three. But up and down, I think I can only get two. And I want to make sure, as you can see, I have no space between here to take these things apart. So I'm going to go ahead and put six millimeters in between, that's about a quarter of an inch, which is plenty of room to get a pair of scissors in. And I want to auto resequence by color because I want it to stitch each section before changing the thread. If you're, um, especially if you're doing it on a machine where you're changing the thread yourself. If you're on a six needle, it's not as critical. Now I will apply those settings and I will say OK. And I want you to notice that there are my butterflies, and I know that they fit inside my hoop. I have plenty of room to trim, and I can go ahead and stitch out six coasters at a time. Now realize this isn't going to have a whole lot of stitching time because they're not huge, huge designs. Now these are three inch um, circles, so we know they're not teensy designs either. So now we're going to take this to the machine. We will file. Save as. Go ahead and save it as your, uh, you know, six butterfly coasters. You know, whatever you want to name it. And then make sure that you first save it. I always save everything to start with in my Floriani uh, native format. That's just a habit. I always save it in my native format first. And then I come back and I save it in whatever format I'm going to need it to be for my stitch out. Now I'm going to go ahead at this time and I am going to put it on my little jump drive that's going to go to my machine. So there it is. 
my six coasters. I'm going to put it in PES. I'm going to save it. And it's now going to my jump drive, and I'm ready to go to my machine and stitch out. But before we do that, I just want to show you a couple of other fun little things that we could have done here. Now I'm going to select this butterfly and I'm just going to delete it out. Now I could come and we're just back to one, but we're going to just look at some fun that we could do because with our coaster outside done, and I will zoom in just to look, I can put anything in there I want. What if I would like to grab a text design? Now I looked through my text designs and you could put almost any of these inside your coaster. So just think how fun, maybe for a, a men's room, the man cave, you could put the fish. You can come in here and you can, let's go down, we've got all kinds of cute alphabets, cute things in here that are just fun to use. And I picked this bee. I just happen to like bees. I fit him in here. Now I notice he's a little bit large, that's okay. I can just make him a little smaller. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the coaster outside and I'm going to right mouse click and change the color. So now I've created a different coaster insert. Let's go to our next butterfly. Let's delete him. And maybe I want to put a monogram in this one. So let me grab monogram. Let's click on here. Now again we've got our screen, our uh, sequence view up. But let's drag it down. And I've got circle monograms selected. Now remember, you've got tons of monograms in here. But I'm going to put my monogram, L, Q, K. And I'm also going to put some of the decor that goes with the circle. I know that I want this probably, um, we are in millimeters. I'm going to go back to inches because I'm thinking of height of letters in inches. I'm going to say I want this about two inches tall. So let's apply that. I can take it, oops, I didn't apply my decor, let me get my decor, apply, and there is, oops, don't make that mistake, click off of it and select it so you can move it around, and I can move this, and now in this case, I would take this one, holding down my control key, select the outside circle, and I want you to right mouse click, and I would like you to align center because you do want that monogram perfectly centered. I can change the color of my monogram. I can change the color, grab my outside and right mouse click on that and I can change, ooh, we took a hike, I can change the color. Do you see how much fun and how easy it can be to play with these coasters? I hope you've enjoyed this month's lesson and I look forward to the construction portion of our project.